surf. So this is at Umschlanga Rocks. The waves can just be huge. Surface paradise too, I might add. It's big with the sharks. Hence the sharks board just at the about 200 meters from here. We're at the sharks board. Of course, the great white, famous for Durban. The many people it's eaten. I don't know what's it say here. It's taken. We're just taking more common than in the warm water, so that's the most common shark they're getting. And this is actually a cast of one of their great whites. Oh, ho, don't put your hand in there, buddy. There's a shark here, smells a bit sharky at this point. Waiting for his dissection, or toxy, laying here by himself. We're gonna go and watch a video. The fins are very rigid. As I say, ooh, the skin is just like sandpaper this way. Rough sand grains going that way. Not sure what kind of a shark. There's his top fin right there. So, his eyes dried out. The other ones, I don't see much in the way of teeth, but no, I see some teeth. Some teeth are down in there as well. The collage of all the involved shark attacks uh, that have taken place off the shores of Durban here. Shark snatchings, horrified frenzy, man pulled to his death, uh, shark terror, uh, what else we got here? Horror of shark attack, fatal shark attack, people just disappear off the beach. So uh, beware I showed, exactly where I showed the, um, the kite surfers, it appears to be uh, exactly where people get taken and they just disappear. So that shows basically the sardine run, they're uh, they all spawning down down around there and then you can see the blue arrow where they move up the coast and that usually happens around June, early June and then at that point the sharks and dolphins drive them close in along the shoreline and uh, I guess when you're on the beach they're just literally um, swarming and you can just put in buckets, I remember hearing about that when I was a kid, uh, you can put in buckets and just hold them out in huge quantities. that smell from a dead shark is because when they pee, they pee through the pores of their skin. You know like how it has fire? That is how they urinate. So that is why you get that ammonia-like smell from a dead shark. Now coming back to the dusky shark. This is how we know it's a dusky. It's a fairly stout shark. It's got a rounded snout. And if you look at the first dorsal fin, it just lies behind the axle of the pictorial fin. Unlike the selva, if it was a selva shark, the first dorsal fin will be somewhere here. Dusky has also got a faint interdorsal ridge, so that is how you know it is a dusky shark. If it was a great white, they tend to be very big in size. You look at the belly of the great white, it is always snow white. It's got a torpedo body shape, pointed snout, 
the teeth are triangular and can be serrated. And we also spoke about the tape. And we said with the great white, it's got a half more shaped tape. And that is how you know it's a great white. If it was a hammer head, the head would be shaped like a hammer. And in hammer heads, there's three types. There's a skelet, a smooth, and a great hammer head. Look at the cap of the head. If it's a smooth hammer head, it will have a smooth cap. If it's a skelet, it's got a central notch. If it's a great hammer head, it's very flat and it is larger than that one of its skelet and the smooth. So they are endangered species. And if you look at the teeth of the great white, it's got triangular teeth and those teeth are heavily serrated. So with these teeth, they can just cut big chunks so they can feed on other sharks. They feed on turtles, scales, rays. Like I said, the biggest one that we've ever caught was 4.8 meters long. With the great white, they can actually exceed 7 meters long. And last, remember, they have an underdeveloped bladder, so it stores its energy food in a form of oil in the liver. And the oil that is stored here on the liver is very light, so it's like the chunks don't have veins like us human beings, but instead they've got tiny capillaries running up and down the body. So if it's got yummy, This shark here was caught in Richards Bay and it was caught on the 2nd of August 2013. It's only 145 centimeters long and it only weighs 33 kilograms. So that is the liver of the shark. That's what? It's the liver. And now another thing that we're going to look at, we're going to look at the stomach. The stomach is very interesting. Sometimes the shark will confuse unwanted items that are found in the ocean as part of its food. And once the shark realized this doesn't form part of my diet and I just want to get rid of it, a shark has an ability to pull the stomach towards the mouth, turn it inside out, get rid of whatever it is that it wants to get rid of, pull the stomach back inside and carry on living. And also, it contains very strong gastric juices which are acidic. So you have to see what different sharks feed on because remember, we said that their teeth are designed according to what they eat. So with the dusky, because it's juvenile like this one, it's not, it normally feeds on small fish. But as the shark matures, the diet change, they feed on other sharks, they also feed on big fish. So dusky sharks are potentially dangerous. And when you look at the stomach, you'll actually notice that it's shaped more like a sock. With the stomach of the shark, they can just keep eat as much as they can, and the stomach just keeps on getting bigger and bigger. Last year we dissected a dusky shark. This was a female. <laughs> okay, so when you look at the stomach, it has an ability to expand. Sharks can eat as much as they can, and the stomach just keeps on getting bigger and bigger. Last year, July, we dissected a <laughs> Now we're going to see the intestine of the shark. Different sharks have got different sharks have got different intestine that do not for the absorption of food. But if it was a great white, a male core, and a ragged tooth, the intestine wouldn't be thin and long, but theirs would actually be short and fat with a lot of internal folds, so it will be more of a spiral valve. So they don't have large intestines and small intestines like us human beings. So that is the intestine of the shark. Do you think that it only has two chambers? got one for inflow and one for outflow so it's just the pumping in and the pumping out of the blood. Is there anybody looking for a heart transplant? That's the heart. It doesn't have a very big one but at least it has a heart. Even with the four meter size shark it will only have a heart that's the size of a man's fist. So I guess the, the heart pumps blood directly from the gills straight through the rest of the body obviously it doesn't have a lung so this is where the I believe the oxygen is absorbed and this hook doesn't seem to be dug in so it's I don't know if it was caught on this or it was caught in the nets now we're going to cut the snout and we're going to show you the snot yeah. do you want to see the snot yeah. The shark snout is filled with jelly-like substance and we call this the ampullae of Lorenzini. It's just for helping the shark to feed in the dark and under this water. So when the shark is looking for food, if there is anything that is hidden under the sand, it can just sense it by using the snout. And it also helps the shark to pick up if there is any electromagnetic field given off by any swimming creatures. 
Now, Babalu is finished. Let's put our hands together for Babalu Paul. Welcome. Well done. And just underneath the snout, a shark has got two tiny holes. These are nostrils, and nostrils of the shark are not for breathing, but they are mainly for smelling. Sharks have got very strong sense of smell. You can smell one teaspoon of blood in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. So if you're bleeding, it doesn't really matter whether you have a small cut or a big cut, just keep away from the water, because as soon as the sharks smell your blood, it will want to swim towards that direction. Sharks are about to attack their prey. All they do is cover the eye with an excitating membrane for protection. However, we've got sharks that don't have this extra eyelid. So for those sharks, all they do is roll their eyes backwards when they're about to attack in order for them to protect it gets extracted from the water. That is how breathing takes place. And that is why, unfortunately, this one ended up here this afternoon because the, once a shark gets stuck in the left part too long, then it ends up suffocating and that is how it ends up being dead. Along either side of the shark's body, just under the skin, there is a canal filled with hair like filaments and it runs from the head right down to the tail, helping the shark to pick up vibrations in the water. So a shark can detect between a healthy swimming fish and the one that is in distress and it's most likely to go after the one in distress rather than a healthy swimming one. <laughs> Make sure that you are swimming when there is shark nets. Make sure that you don't swim early in the morning or late at night. Must tell you I'm a swimmer. <laughs> you got it? Smile. <laughs> okay. Make sure you're swimming when there's shark nets. Don't go out to sea early in the morning or late at night. If you're bleeding, it doesn't matter whether you have a small cut or a big cut. Keep away from water if bleeding. Obey your lifeguards at all times. Don't swim in an area known to be inhabited by sharks. Don't swim when there's a whole lot of fish activity. Don't swim immediately after having a big meal, rather wait a while. Alcohol and water don't mix, so no drinking and diving. Never ever swim alone, always take someone with you. Even if it means you take your mother-in-law with you. Make sure she's swimming in front of you, swim right behind her. But never swim alone. Remember, the shark will pick up your vibrations more if you are on your own rather than the people in the right group. So swim in groups at all times. You see this, this is the lateral line, it's like a sensory organ. It almost functions a bit like an ear with cilia. And if there's movement in the water, the shark can basically sense the movements. It's almost like you can feel a swimmer nearby uh, from this lateral, uh, the lateral line. And if you can't remember any of those tips, you just refer back to the first tip, which was... Swim at Nesset Beaches, you guys have been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. Now you can come and have a social.